Hi, Nerd Troopers. Today I have a quick message about splitting. Splitting is when the narcissist sees everything in black and white. There is no gray. There are no shades of layers of other colors or ambiguity or anything like that. They see things as black and white, yes or no, good or bad, like that. So in the beginning, they are infatuated with you. And as the relationship goes on, they um, become less infatuated. They don't idealize you as they did in the love bombing stage, and they begin to devalue you. In the end, you are discarded. And when that happens, they just summarily discharge you, kick you to the curb, and it's as if you never existed. Pretty tough stuff. So they do this because it's unimaginable for, the, unimaginable for them to think that you could be good but have any bad feelings. Like if you're angry with them, then you must be all bad. If you are demanding some change or you're, having, uh, you're sick temporarily or something, then they suddenly paint you all black and you are of zero value and they move on to the next. So you're either all good, idealized, um, snapshotted, um, photoshopped into perfection, and then, you know, it goes straight downhill from there. In the end, you're nothing. And you have no good qualities. You deserve what happened to you, according to them. And I think it's super important that we all remember you do not deserve to be abused. You do not deserve the ambient uh, mockery, contempt, humiliation, degrading, all of the stuff that the covert narcissist does, sort of with a smile or a smirk. Um, I'm just kidding around, you know, but they pick at you and pick at you and pick at you. It's death by a thousand paper cuts. And those of you who've been in it, you know what I mean. And it's because you can't do anything right at that point. You have fallen from grace. Um, they don't have this idealized version of you anymore. Something went awry and you have failed in some way. So you deserve to be punished. You deserve what you get for being dumb enough to buy into the game all along. And it is to them very much just a game. It's not real. None of it's real. Even though it seems real, that's because they're reflecting, mimicking, parroting, um, just showing back what you're feeling. They're reflecting that back to you. So yeah, it seems very real and genuine and authentic and like the most uh, symbiotic synchronicity and awesomeness that ever, ever existed. You think, oh my gosh, this must be my soulmate because we walk to the, as Henry David Thoreau once said, we both walk to the beat of a different drummer, however measured or far away. And that's kind of what you tell yourself when you're in the shared fantasy, but it's not true because none of it's real and they're just acting. They're just acting a part and they're really good at it because they don't have any identity or core of their own. So of course, when they put yours on, it's a really good fit because there is no them to conceal in the first place or anything like that. So I wanted to talk about that term splitting, that you're either good or bad, um, all good or all bad. There's no middle ground. They, they can't conceive that a person could have two feelings at the same time, that you could love them, but be mad at them, that you could love them and be disappointed or frustrated or upset or angry or whatever, you know, they to them, that doesn't make sense because first of all, they don't love and they don't know what love is. They don't really feel it. They're just mirroring you and reflecting back to you the love that you have. And um, yeah, it's, it's not a good thing. So in this very strange uh, world of smoke and mirrors that's upside down, topsy-turvy, um, you're never going to be able to reach them. They are beyond reach, um, in a place where, you know, that's where, um, it's like the cave, you know, Plato's cave. They are more comfortable with, um, the, the shadows than with the real world. And you can't ever 